the return of Travel Explained Summit. Joining us now is Bill Van Gorder, CARP's Chief Policy Officer, Chief Operating Officer, and the founding chair of the Nova Scotia chapter of CARP. Welcome, Bill. I heard you have a few questions from CARP members for Ramesh. Take it away. I do. Thank you, Natasha. We do have a number of uh, uh, travel-related questions that were sent via the CARP uh, website. The first one is from Kay Power, who asks, is COVID insurance now a must-have, especially if we're traveling to the USA? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, travel insurance in general was a must-have uh, pre-pandemic, but, but definitely in times like this with COVID uh, running rampant, it is definitely a must-have. The virus is so unpredictable that you should always err on the side of caution. Having the right coverage also provides that peace of mind. It is not something you want to be worried about while you're at destination. Plus, I personally wouldn't want the financial risk of traveling outside of Canada without coverage specifically for COVID-19. If you're not covered and get COVID while you're on vacation, you know, you're responsible for, for all the medical and related costs. So uh, to make a, to, to answer your question quickly, absolutely. Good. Um, we heard, we've heard a lot about travel advisories. What do the various levels of travel advisories mean? And, and where can we go to find out uh, that information and, and what they're telling us? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, this information can be found on our, on our website. We have links directly to the Government of Canada website on uh, carptravelinsurance.ca uh, on the travel page specifically. But there are four specific travel advisories that uh, the Government of Canada utilizes today. Uh, currently, we're on a level three. Uh, there is one level of, ahead of us here called uh, level four, and it's to avoid all travel. Thankfully, we're not there yet. Uh, but you can definitely go to the website and take a look at the specifics of all four levels. Okay, understood. Well, but what happens if uh, the level moves from level three to level four uh, when I'm traveling? Am I still covered? Yeah, so a uh, great question. As long as you meet the conditions of the policy you have, uh, a move from a level three to a four will, will not impact the benefits. Uh, but I will say it's important to review and understand your policy um, and its limitation as it relates to those advisories. Okay. And, and what if I get COVID while I'm traveling? Will you fly me back to Canada? Um, great question. It, it does really depend on how severe the virus has impacted you and how severe your, your presentation is at the hospital. Um, however, this is definitely an option that is reviewed during the assessment time during the medical emergency. And one of our case managers will definitely be walking you through that process should you be in that unfortunate situation. And, and if I get uh, uh, my, my vaccination status, uh, how does that um, uh, deal with my, my ability to uh, uh, have co coverage? Does it matter? Yeah, for, for some insurers, it does not. For others, it can, it can simply mean a change in the, in the amount of benefit that's available to you. You know, we just spoke briefly about having $10 million being fully vaccinated if you purchase one of our COVID-19 plans versus the 1 million if you're not. So, so really, uh, especially as it relates to the U.S., you know, the, the market there and the, the, the amount of money that they've, they're able to charge uh, for medical expenses is so severe that $1 million can go so quickly. Here's another from uh, the CARP website. Uh, Jay Circus asks, what health care coverage do you need to spend three months of the winter in Cusco? And is travel insurance for CARP members enough? Uh, great question. And, and really, it comes down to a personal decision. Uh, travel insurance for CARP members, single and multi-trip emergency plans offer that uh, you know up to $10 million worth of coverage. And additional coverage is available for expenses related to COVID-19. Uh, if you're fully vaccinated. So, um, you know, whether you're there for three months or six months, you know, uh, CARP insurance is definitely the way to go. And we do offer uh, benefit limits that will definitely help you out. Okay. And again, through the CARP uh, website, uh, J, uh, um, uh, I, Francis asks, how does the government level three advisory for non-essential travel to a particular country impact continuing supplementary health coverage that includes travel medical insurance? Yeah, um, well, absolutely. You need to take a look at the conditions of whatever policy you do have and what coverage you have within maybe your group insurance plan. Um, you know, an insurance policy is a legal contract and a major reason for a claim being denied is that people simply don't know what is and what isn't covered. 
So I would say um, definitely take a look at the specifics within the policy to see how travel advisories may impact the coverage. Um, as I know for a fact, you know, the individual and multi-trip plans, you know, do have verbiage surrounding the travel advisories. And so, um, you know, do your homework. Don't, uh, don't just assume that there is coverage um, and really take a look at, you know, the specific wording as it relates to the travel advisory. Good, good advice. So is trip cancellation and interruption insurance still available for out of, uh, out of country travel? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it definitely is. Um, now, from a COVID-19 standpoint, if you're looking to cancel because of COVID-19 specifically, you know, there are there are exclusions to that just because COVID-19 is a very well-known event. So depending on when you purchased your policy, um, if it was a known event, you know, you can't really cancel for reasons because of COVID-19. So, um, you know, if you, for example, break your leg and, and you can't uh, take your trip any longer, you know, that's definitely something that is available to us on a, on a trip cancellation benefit. We have time for one more question. So let's come back to our own country. What would I, why would I need travel insurance if I was just staying and traveling in Canada? Yeah, great question. And we talked about it briefly earlier as well. You know, what, the province that you're from really dictates, you know, the cost that they're going to cover uh, within, your, within your province. So if you're in BC, you have to take a look at the BC rates versus the Ontario rates. And Ontario will obviously cover what they would have covered um, had you been in Ontario at that time. Um, and again, we talked briefly about you know, some of the costs that may not be covered, such as prescription drugs and ambulances and x-rays. Um, and of course, you know, if it comes down to it and you want to be repatriated back home to your home province because you no longer want to sit in, a, in, in the hospital uh, in, a, in a, well, I wouldn't say a foreign province, but a province that you know, you, there's no family around or anything like that, you know, the cost to bring you back home could be $20,000. And that's something that that, that uh, the OHUP coverage would not cover. Great, uh, great information for all of us. So before we uh, leave this part, any last words of advice that you have for us? Yeah, just again, I'm going to reiterate the fact that when you travel outside of Canada, the amount of coverage that you have through the government is extremely limited. So be sure to understand that because it could be very financially de devastating especially in the U.S. where the amount of the costs there are just unreal. Um, and because of those extended hospital stays, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, a very large sum of money. And I've seen the bills to prove it. So uh, be sure to take a look at that and understand that the coverage is very limited. There are a lot of people out there that just think that, oh, you know, my government will cover it and all who will cover it. But that's, that's definitely not the case. Also know that there are so many different plans out there. Be sure to do your research and be sure that the policy you choose fits your health profile and your coverage needs. Uh, choosing the right travel insurance could be the most important thing you do, especially traveling in this climate. Lastly, I would say do not wait last minute to purchase your policy. Give yourself enough time to really read the policy, understand the policy. And if you have questions, call a licensed broker to get those answers. Thank you very much. Great advice. You're welcome. Well, thank you, Imesh, and thank you, Bill, for those lovely questions from current members. That was some very sage advice, and similar to what we've been hearing from our other speakers, in addition to planning your trips early, also plan your insurance early. So I do have a question. Are there any countries uh, that travelers should avoid? Um, like, is travel insurance sort of a one-size-fits-all, no matter where in the world I go, or are there any sort of places that maybe I should look to thinking about holding off for now? Yeah, great, great question. And I think, um, you know, every country is handling the pandemic in different ways. So I think earlier someone had mentioned, you know, be sure to do your research, go to the government website of that particular country, see what the requirements are. You know, I, I've seen certain countries require not just travel insurance, but travel insurance that has COVID coverage on it as well. So be sure to do your research uh, at that particular country and just see what the requirements are, because uh, you don't want to get there and be denied entry to that country just because of uh, insurance. That's, that's a very important to think of. And, and I also, one of my apprehensions with going international right now is, and I, I'm sure it's not common, but what if I'm somewhere and the border shuts down? Is there anything around travel insurance that would help me as a Canadian come back to my country? You know, we haven't seen anything, you know, stop Canadians from coming back uh, home. Uh, I think during the pandemic, even though we were on a, a bit of a lockdown, the only 
folks that are allowed back into our country were Canadian. So I, I don't see anything currently from a policy perspective that would ever restrict that. Uh, but again, it's so it's so important to understand, you know, where to go when these things happen, so that you can get all the up to date information. And then uh, another question I have is: a, a lot of people depend. We depend on our credit card insurance, uh, and then you mm. find out, oh, probably not the best thing when you're actually in a situation where you need insurance. And so, can you clarify a little bit around the insurance we get with our credit cards versus what you would get through uh, an advisor such as yourself with the McLennan Group? Yes, absolutely. And, and this is definitely one of those things that we, we get um, frequently. We get this question a lot. And thankfully, we get those questions because for some, you know, they go on their trips thinking that the credit card insurance is, is enough. Um, and oftentimes, credit card insurances will have limitations on what pol the policy benefits might be. Uh, but not only that, the coverages are different per credit card, just like any policy that you would purchase. Again, uh, as part of my advice was to really take a look at your policy coverage, take a look at the booklet that was provided to you. I know no one wants to read the fine print, but it's almost a must during this time. Um, you know, coverages uh, with credit cards often will have, you know, limitations on, okay, well, this coverage will be in effect so long as, you know, your trips are a particular amount of days. So there are these little nuances that you'll find within credit card coverages that you may not find exactly on the travel insurance, particular insurance coverages and policies that are out there. Thank you. And, and Bill and Umesh, this is a question I want to ask both of you, because this is a travel event. So where is the first place that you will both travel to uh, when you're ready? So, Bill, you can go first. All right. Well, my first uh, travel will be out of the province and, and uh, uh, to visit uh, family and friends. And the second travel out of the country, uh, we'd like to do a cruise in Portugal. That sounds amazing. <laughs> and Umesh, same question for you. Yeah, so uh, definitely out of province and uh, looking forward to, to Cancun or, or somewhere in Mexico. We went there a couple of years ago and absolutely enjoyed it. So I want to take the family back there again. Amazing. And, and is there anything that the McLennan Group is doing to, to keep up with the evolving needs of travelers? How are you keeping your finger on the pulse of travel trends and insurance needs? Yeah, I'll, I'll speak from, from our perspective, you know, really just keeping a pulse on, on the news, keeping a pulse on government websites, you know, taking a look at the trends, you know, how is, you know, Europe reacting to the COVID-19 pandemic? How is, how are things evolving in Mexico? Um, really, it comes down to taking a look at those travel advisories, uh, taking a look at the websites uh, of the various countries that we may service, especially mostly, and, and be in tune with what those updates look like. And not only that, but get prepared for what those uh, how, and how those um, those new advisories might impact how we do business here. Amazing. Thank you so much. And you, you've definitely given me a lot of food for thought. Uh, and I'm excited to travel my next trip and to buy insurance because that is the most important thing I have learned from your talk today. Mm -hmm.